It's hard to believe it's been over a year now since we had the end of the Late Late Show with James Corden, and, um, you know, it's weird because even though that one is more, that's been the most successful version of the Late Late Show in terms of awards recognition and how successful it was in terms of ratings, like, most people still find the original eras of the Late Late Show, the Tom, Ke the Tom Snyder years, you know, the, the Craig Kilborn years, the Craig Ferguson years. They find those to be more successful, and I do feel like that that's the same way, too. I mean, when it comes to James Corden, there's always been this love-hate thing with him. It's weird because when he f first came to America, everyone kind of appreciated him here in the U.S. I mean, we didn't know about this reputation he had over in the U.K. until very late on into the Late Late Show's early run, but I'm not going to lie, when James Corden first came to the U.S., I thought he had a lot of potential. I saw him in some movies where I thought he was very good, like um, Into the Woods, and even in, even in later stuff, like the Peter Rabbit movies. I was actually kind of surprised at how much I enjoyed him in those films. But, um, you know, when you think of James Corden, the usual reaction is that the guy is a little bit... Too, is got a big ego of himself. People really don't like him all that much. I mean, he's a guy that has been so, so oversaturated, and just he just feels like a person that is just not... He just doesn't seem like a real nice person in real life that he puts on that, that he puts on TV, and um, some people and there has he has made a lot of bad movies. Don't get me wrong, he's made stuff like he's been involved with stuff like Planet Fifty One, Gulliver's Travels, um, the Emoji Movie. Uh, what's another one he did? Um, Cats, uh, Cinderella. I mean, if you here's how I felt about James Corden. I didn't hate the guy until I saw him in Cinderella. Uh, the 2021 one with Camila Cabello. That at that point, everyone had already hated him. At that point, but that was the point where I was just kind of like, "Yeah, I'm just this guy is way too annoying, and he's just getting on my nerves at this point." And um, so, why am I bringing it up here? Why am I bringing this whole thing up here? Because um, I want to know. What, is I think a lot of people, a lot of people out there will probably th be probably look at the Late Late Show with James Corden and think to themselves, you know, that wasn't a great show overall, but. Like I said, the show was successful, and it did win Emmy Awards, which is more than any of the other versions of The Late Late Show ever did. So how will we look at The Late Late Show with James Corden? How will that be remembered down the road when we're thinking of the great eras of late-night television? And um, I think it's safe to say that, you know, it's funny, because when The Late Late Show with James Corden started, I was kind of excited because, you know, Craig Ferguson had so much... When Craig Ferguson was on that show... He made that show so much more fun than it had any right to be. Like, you know, when I think of the best late night host in general, you know, I think of guys like David Letterman. I think of stuff guys like John Stewart. I mean, my favorite one of all is Conan O'Brien, but Craig Ferguson is very much high up there. Probably my second favorite of the two. I mean, of the of Conan, like it goes Conan, Craig, then John Stewart, then Stephen Colbert. There are other guys in late night I do like overall. Like I do like like Johnny Carson, obviously. Um, Seth Meyers I do really like a lot. Uh, Steve, uh, uh, who else? Did, I don't think I even mentioned. Did I mention David Letterman? No, David Letterman should be in that list, obviously. But you know, I was very curious to see what James Corden would bring to the table when that new show premiered. And so, a couple months after Craig Ferguson's show ended, we finally get the new show and. You know, I come out of it thinking, okay, this is not bad whatsoever, but it just doesn't feel like it has that same spark as the late as the Craig Ferguson Late Late Show era did. I mean, Craig Ferguson, the great, I should do a video just on that alone, but the, the Craig Ferguson Late Late Show years were just so much fun to watch because Craig Ferguson decided to just do a show where anything can happen, like, it, even with the cheapest effects possible, the cheapest stuff that they can work with, like, they made it work, he made it work, and it just made it, it's like, when I was watching late night TV a lot back in the day, it was always between, like, should, what should I turn, on, turn to, should I turn to Conan O'Brien, should I turn to Craig Ferguson, should I turn to, you know, when Jimmy Fallon took over, should I took up, turn over there, turn it over to, um, Craig Ferguson, like, it was really, it was really tough to do at the begin beginning, especially when Conan O'Brien was op opposite him, but, like when when Jimmy Fallon took over, and then and then I started watching more Craig Ferguson. I started to realize how how much this guy was just such a game changer for late night television and what he was able to do. Like the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, 
is one of my all-time favorite TV shows because of just the spontaneity of it, the fact that Craig Ferguson went all in on it and just said, you know what, we're just going to put on a show. We don't care what we have to do. We don't have, care how stupid we have to be. We're just going to put on a show and just have a good time with it. It's probably the most underrated late-night show in the history of late-night shows, and that's saying a lot, but, I mean, it's a show that just really, like, and Craig Ferguson just felt like he loved being there too. I mean, it was just, it was just something that you just watched, and it was just like a whole experience. If you were watching it at the time, it was a groundbreaking show for the time period, and you know, the fact that is like, if I have to compare that to James Corden, there's a lot of things I can say about that, about the late, the Late Late Show when James Corden takes over and when Craig Ferguson t- had it, like. Craig Ferguson took a simple job and made it his own thing by not only having guests and occasionally a musical number, but also adding in puppets, a robot sidekick, a stalker horse, and just a lot of randomness. It's so hilarious to watch, and it's worth watching every single time. With James Corden, it just feels like when... It's, I finally figured out why I feel like the way I do about James Corden, because when I watched The Late Late Show with James Corden, when I did regularly, like, a, like around... Um, I can't remember what it was, maybe 2015, 2016, like about a year into the show, I started realizing why I wasn't getting into the Late Late Show all that much now with James Corden, and I finally figured it out. CBS was turning James Corden into, in, into their equivalent to Jimmy Fallon, a safe, marketable comedian doing a safe and marketable version of a show, sanitized, like doing the complete opposite thing you're supposed to do with late night television. I mean, it's just... I mean, it's just like... I have nothing against Jimmy Fallon, per se, and I don't think he's bad as the host of The Tonight Show, but at the same time, he definitely is the least controversial of all the Tonight Show hosts they've had. I mean, like, this is a guy that, like, he's go, like, he plays it too safe, plays it too sanitized at times, but it's just, like, a safe and marketable person. Like, they've marketed more of The Tonight Show around Jimmy Fallon to any other Tonight Show host. I mean, you don't see Johnny Carson with a theme park, with an attraction inside of Universal Studios. You don't see a Jay Leno area... As a Jay Leno sh- Tonight Show based, uh, based solely for kids. Stuff that's happened with Jimmy Fallon. And certainly not when Conan O'Brien was there because they didn't even give him a chance to, to succeed on that part. But um, if it, I feel like what NBC has done with Jimmy Fallon and The Tonight Show, that's what CBS did to The Late Late Show when they brought in James Corden. And not that he's bad, but it just feels like he's just too safe, too, too marketable, too sanitized. The fact that that late late show, this late late show that we just had, had more Emmy consideration, more Emmy award nominations than any of the eras of Tom, the Tom Snyder era, the Craig Kilborn era, the Craig Ferguson era, that's an insult to the Emmy to the Emmys and just television in general. Like when Ferguson's late late show ended, there really was this void that went with it. If you got any enjoyment out of the show, you just knew that you were rarely going to see a show like that ever again, and. You definitely can see that with the Late Late Show. It just felt with that with what that last era was with James Corden. It just felt like a show that just felt like too much of it. Like too much of what made the, Craig Ferguson's run so special was just not there. James Corden was like way too happy. Like he was way too in, into it with the celebrities. Like that fake enthusiasm, if you will. And like going back to Craig Ferguson, the great thing, what I love about Craig Ferguson so much is that, like. When you saw him on is during the show during the time when you know, you know when he was behind David Letterman, you just thought to yourself like when David Letterman announces his retirement, this guy should be the next guy to take his place as the new the new heir to the late night throne at CBS. And th- that was my idea thinking that when you know when David Letterman announces his retirement, I'm thinking okay this is where Craig Ferguson's going to come into pl- play here. And then they gave it to Stephen Colbert, which is not a bad choice. And I thought that at the time it was always seeming like that Ferguson was the likely heir, so CBS would avoid a repeat of what happened with NBC and the numerous Tonight Show controversial changeovers. And for many years, I thought Craig Ferguson never really got the chance to compete for that job. And when I had read his, I actually had read his newest, the, the new book at the time when that book, Riding the Elephant, came out, which I do recommend checking out. And it says inside the book that. No, Ferguson was always expected to end the show that year and was getting ready to announce he was leaving, but then Letterman announced his retirement. And when he announced he was leaving, he basically said that that was his plan all along. And and it came out the same day that, you know, Ferguson left because he had wanted to let people know of his plan to move on from a late, late show for months. And he really did not have any intention to, you know, continue to be that guy at, at 1130, which... 
I give the guy a lot of respect for. He went on on his own terms. He wanted to still be funny and not in the over the top way that made the show such a groundbreaker for the time. But I feel like they had a missed opportunity here when, you know, they. I really think that Craig Ferguson probably should have gotten a chance to do a one hundred thirty sh- show at CBS. I feel like that it was setting itself up for that moment to actually do that and just. It just never came to be, and unfortunately, we got James Corden in the process. Because there's a big difference between what Craig Ferguson did on his Late Late Show and James Corden, obviously. I mean, when it comes to Craig Ferguson, he's just a fascinating individual in general. He's a guy who, he was a guy who was literally about to kill himself very early in his life because of his addictions, and he went on to have this great career. I mean, he's talked about it in in these great monologues where he's talking about, like, one of the best things about it was when he did, um was when Britney Spears was in the news and he decided I'm not going to do any Britney Spears jokes but instead I'm going to do a monologue talking about my past life and how I almost went to kill myself and stuff like that just like that's missing from James Corden a guy that can be so funny but also can be very serious about his personal life and his troubled past on national television and that's just something that's very rarely seen with a lot of these late night hosts in general. Like you don't really see that with a lot of late night hosts anymore. And Craig Ferguson was one of those guys. Like he reminded me so much of what Johnny Carson and David Letterman used to do back in the day in terms of like, you know, they can be serious about some of the stuff they're talking about, but they can also be very funny at the same time. They find that perfect balance that works so well here. And it and it just it just really hurts me that James Corden was never really up to that par, and especially in those later years, it just felt like, okay, this guy's clear, the, the guy clearly is moving into an area where he's just doing the same thing, he's just essentially doing what, um, the tonight, what's happening over at Jimmy Fallon with The Tonight Show, and it's just, it's just not fun anymore, it's part of the problem with late night television in general, like, it's supposed to be, Late night is supposed to be an area where you're supposed to go off the wall, like, it's supposed to be off limits on what you can do, I mean, but it feels like every, it, most of the, it's, I'm trying not to get political here but I'm sorry but this is just kind of where we're at right now it's just kind of like you know like with um, like ever since Trump took office and this is just with comedy in general you don't feel it, it doesn't feel like that great comedy that we had before 2015 when all this chaos started really is just left and like it really it's really hard to do the great offensive offensive comedy that you is that is what makes great comedy. I mean, misery makes for great comedy, and the problem is, like, ever since what, ever since that, ever since 2015, it just feels like late night television plays it way too safe and too sanitized. Like, if I'm like right now, looking at all the people involved in late night right now, the only ones I really pay attention to really are uh, one, John Stewart, uh, two, John Oliver, which I probably should have put in my list of late night hosts in general that I really stood and watch. Stephen Colbert, and then Seth Meyers. Those are, like, the big four that I still keep track with. And it just it just doesn't feel like that a lot of these late-night shows really, really... They've, they've kind of changed the way that you're supposed to do comedy in general because it feels like they don't want to be too offensive, but that's the... It's, but maybe that's... Okay, that, I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit here, but that's supposed to be what the, the point of late-night comedy is. Late night comedy is supposed to be more off the wall. It could be a little. It should be a little bit more offensive. The satire should be bit biting satire. Like it's not supposed to be the safe, sanitized, you know, like I said, safe, sanitized, marketable garbage that we kind of have now with some with most of these late night shows in general. And it's just something that I see a lot with when I see James Corden because he's got all these celebrities around. He's always talking about having a good time and all that. Like it just doesn't feel. Is, and he's just not, and he just really, like, all that goodwill that I had with him early on just kind of went away as that show continued forward. And it just feels like a show where nothing really much ha- happens that we haven't s- seen done much better in other shows. And so how will the Late Late Show with James Corden be remembered? At least for me, probably not very well. If I'm going to watch any version of the Late Late Show again, it w- would be the Craig Ferguson era for sure. I have no intention of ever watching the James Corden era ever again, and it just felt like a time where, like, the possibilities were there for something special, and it just, it just went the, it just went, went the route of turning it into a generic ass late night talk show. I mean, like it's like it's a wannabe version of the Tonight Show, the new, t- the current Tonight Show, not the, not what makes the Tonight Show so special, but this, the kind of era that's going on right now at the at the Tonight Show, but um. 
but yeah, but the good news, if there's any good news from this, they did, is even though the Late Late Show era is done right now, they did find a good show to replace it with After Midnight with uh, Taylor Tomlinson, which I have been really admiring. I like the original At Midnight show with um, Chris Hardwick that was on Comedy Central, and I thought when they brought it back to CBS for this new show, I was really excited to see where they went with it, and so far I can say, like, it's only been on for a couple months as of the time I'm recording this, it's a really good show, it's definitely a lot fun, a lot of fun overall, it definitely does something different compared to other late night shows, I mean, it's a really fun show, and I do recommend checking it out, it makes that block on CBS much more fun in general, and, um, and it makes you forget about the time that James Corden was on there, because, you know, you can finally laugh again at 12.37 on CBS on weekdays, so... There is that in general. So so that's my thoughts on uh, how the Late Late Show with James Corden will be remembered. Probably not anything too spectacular. One of those w- lightning, one of those moments where like there was a brief flash of promise there and then just <clears throat> fell off the ra- radar as the show went on. So so that's all I had to say about that one. If you want to hear what I had to say about June Bucks from last week, I'll put a link to that video here. And I'll also put a link to some of the other videos I've talked about here. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.